muted. All right, so we just got the calls muted out. We also got people on the Facebook Live. I uh, hope you got your pens and your paper ready tonight because we're going to be talking about the power of expectations. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rico. Uh, I've been blessed and fortunate now to be an entrepreneur. Uh, currently, I'm the president and CEO of a company called Nove. Uh, tonight, we're not really here to talk about that, but tonight we're here to talk about uh, how to be able to implement uh, you know, your expectations into your daily regimen uh, when it comes to what you need to do to become successful. Uh, you know, years ago, I started my journey as an entrepreneur. I wasn't totally sure how it was going to end up for me. Uh, but but I, what I did know is I wanted to be able to have a better life in my future than I had in my past. Uh, you know, not only for myself, but also for my children, also for my future family and also for the future generations to come. And if you're listening to the call right now, if you're on this Facebook live right now, uh, you probably hopefully you can relate to something like that. You know, uh, for me, I basically came from very humble beginnings. Um, I grew up uh, without a father. Uh, my mother raised me in a single parent home. I was an only child. Uh, you know, and she worked very hard and she taught me a lot uh, about becoming successful in life in terms of keeping God first in my life. She taught me how to be very determined. Uh, she taught me how to be independent. She taught me how to have a solid work ethic. Uh, but the one thing she couldn't teach me was the how to become financially independent. She couldn't teach me how to build wealth. And she didn't uh, skip over that part because she wanted to. It's not like she didn't want, want me to become uh, financially independent, but she just didn't know how to teach me that. And the reason being, uh, it wasn't taught to her, you know, and it wasn't uh, her grandparents, uh, you know, well, her grandparents didn't teach her parents. And, and you go further up the family tree and it just happened that way. You know, and I don't know how many of you are joining us uh, on this Facebook live this evening. Uh, if you're joining me over the conference call, how many of you want certain amount of success in your life? But you really uh, have never been taught how to have that success. It's going to be very difficult to be able to achieve it. You know, I always tell people you can't do what you don't know. That's why most professionals uh, go to school to be able to learn a profession and then make a lot of money doing it after they perfect it over time. But they actually have to learn it. So, for example, if you were taught and raised in a household where you was raised in poverty, you got to understand that, that you have a, a degree, so to speak, in life. Uh, in terms of what poverty looks like. So you're typically going to duplicate that as you get older. And unfortunately, what happens, uh, you end up duplicating that in your children, right? Uh, just like most wealthy families. If you have families that are wealthy and they start teaching their kids at an early age some wealth principles, what typically ends up happening is they start duplicating those wealth principles in their children. You know, now I don't know about you, but I totally believe God blesses everyone equally, right? All of us have a certain amount of potential within us, but what God also does is he gives us free will. And it's up to us to be able to take advantage uh, of that free will. It's up to us to be able to take the potential that he gives us as a gift, because what we do with that potential is our gift back to him. I'm going to say that again. You know, God blesses all of us with potential. That's our gift. That's the gift he gives to us. But what we do with that potential is our gift to God. Now, most of us don't want to suffer. Most of us don't want to live paycheck to paycheck. You know, most of us don't want terrible relationships. Most of us don't want bad health. Most of us don't want to be broke. No one ever wants to live a bad life. But what I've come to understand is that all life is is a series of decisions. The life we have right now is the sum total of the decisions that we have. So how do we put ourselves in a situation to make some better decisions? See, because if you have a, a bad life, if you, it wasn't the best year you had in your life or it was a pretty bad year, if you feel all the years before really wasn't the life that you really wanted to live, if you feel like your life, your life has really hadn't been that good, it's probably a result of you making some decisions that haven't been that good. If you feel like you've been living a great life, guess what? That's probably a result of you making some pretty good decisions over the course of your life. So in order for us to be able to make better decisions, what we got to understand is we got to be exposed to new information. We got to be exposed to new information, new philosophies, new perspectives, new associations, new opportunities, if we're going to start having new results. So the goal of tonight's conference call is to get you on track with understanding that it's all about opening your mind up to something different if you want something different. My goal tonight is not to sell you anything. My goal tonight is not just to, to motivate you or to inspire you, although that's probably going to happen. You're going to get inspired. You're going to be motivated. But my goal is to educate you. My goal is to expose you to a new way of thinking 
so that you can start getting new results. And that's what happened to me. You know, I started, uh, you know, I got involved with the industry. I became an entrepreneur. But more importantly, I started being mentored and coached by people who had a level of success that I wanted. And it's important to understand that if you want something new in your life, you got to be able to expose yourself to information and people and opportunities that can present that something new for you. It's not just about praying for it. Now, did I say don't pray? No, I didn't say that because I believe in the power of prayer. But you got to understand that it's not just about the prayer, but it's about the expectations that's going to come on the other side of the prayer. See, that's what helps God answer those prayers. See, because when we pray, that's one thing. But what do we expect after we pray? And that's going to be based on your faith. Now, long story short, in a short period of time, I was start. I was begin to become able to start gaining some financial success uh, on my path of entrepreneurship. By the age of 20, 21 years old, I retired from corporate America and I never had a job since. By the time I was 22 years old, I was blessed and fortunate to start earning six figures uh, on an annual basis. And by the time I was 25, I had some months in income over six figures per month in income, eventually, which led to me making seven figures uh, in, in this industry. Uh, and as an entrepreneur, and I've been blessed to start different companies, chair different companies, invest into different things. Uh, you know, I have a lot of time for myself and my family, you, you know, and done some pretty cool things, travel the world, bought some cool stuff. But for me, the thing that I uh, I really am blessed and fortunate to say that, that I really am grateful for the most about the opportunity to change my life financially is the fact to be able to control my time and the fact to be able to, you know, do what I want to do when I want to do it and the level of growth that I receive. See, if you're on this, if you're on the call tonight, if you're watching this Facebook live right now, what I really want you to focus on and get excited about is the idea of being able to grow into a bigger and better person than you were last year. The idea of being able to grow into a bigger and better person than you were the year before. See, five years from now, you want to be able to look back and see growth. Ten years from now, you want to be able to look back and see growth, not only in your bank account, but also in your health, also in your relationships. Also, in other areas where you want to be able to take this thing to the top. So tonight, that's what we're talking about. Tonight, we're going to be talking about, you know, the power of expectations. And I believe that, you know, by, by the time I get finished with sharing with you, you know, these, these six different principles, right? These six different trains of thought and perspectives that you're going to be able to get yourself on track uh, to having the best year yet. See, when it comes to expectations, and I hope you got your pen and your piece of paper ready, you're ready to take some notes because I got a lot of information here for you tonight, and uh, hopefully I can get done, you know, uh, rather quickly, but I want you to be able to embrace everything we're talking about. So the first note I want to give you is I want you to understand that the only difference between successful people and people that are trying to become successful is simply the level of your expectations. That's the only difference. The difference between successful people and people who are trying to become successful, all it boils down to is just the level of expectation. See, one of the reasons why most people, they don't have a proper expectation of what they want to, what they want to gain, because it's like people hope for things, people pray for things, people wish for things, but they don't expect things. See, the reason why you never expected it is because probably you never experienced it. I want you to jot that down because some of the things I say tonight, it may not be a note or a task for you to do, but it may be something to, to reflect on. So when we leave this conference call, when we leave this Facebook Live, you'll be able to read it and you'll be able to say, you know what, that's me. He was talking about me. See, because the only way you're going to be able to correct something in your life is to confront it. The only way you're going to be able to correct something in your life is to confront it. So my job on this conference call, my job on this Facebook Live is to confront you in certain areas and then have you go confront yourself. Because success is all about having a level of accountability. So you got to understand multimillionaires, even billionaires have coaches. Multimillionaires and billionaires, they have mentors that hold them accountable for what they say they're going to do. To hold them accountable for where they say they're going to go. To help them put together a plan and help them stick to it. The reason why most people don't win in life is because they have no accountability. So what I want you to understand starting this thing off is the reason why most people don't expect a certain thing is because they haven't experienced a certain thing. 
But you got to understand until you get on, on point with starting, if you don't start to expect certain things, you will never start to experience those things. So first things first, belief is the foundation of expectancy. That's the first principle. Belief is the foundation of expectancy. I want you to jot that down. I'm going to give you six. That's number one. Belief is the foundation of expectancy. See, I want you to start thinking about moving into this new year. What do you believe for yourself? What do you believe for yourself? What do you believe where you're going to go? What do you believe what you're going to do? What do you believe about your situation? See, for example, early on before I became uh, the president and CEO of a company, before I started my first company, I started believing in something, okay? I'll give you an example. Um, I used to work for the, a company called the Georgia Power Company. If you live in the state of Georgia, it's the major utility for probably about 70 or 80 percent of, of the residents that live here. OK, you probably pay your bill to Georgia Power. And I was a co-op engineer. I used to design overhead and underground distribution lines for subdivisions and new business projects. I thought I had it going on in college, making about twenty dollars an hour. But after I paid my bills, I was still broke. And I figured out very early on that I do not want to live the rest of my life this way. So that's why I started looking into entrepreneurship. But let me tell you how I got inspired while I had my job. Okay, And for a lot of you listening to this, you got to understand that sometimes it's not just about you gaining success uh, or you starting to see some movement with your business or with you know what you are inspired to do in order to be able to be motivated more, be inspired more. It's going to come, defining moments will come when you least expect it. So I'll give you an example. Um, I was standing outside uh, of a building one day and it was all the co-op students. It, we, we were engineers, we were in college. And we had an opportunity to learn from some of the different corporate executives at Georgia Power. And we were standing outside of a building and we were there that day to hear some speeches, uh, you know, from several executives of the company. So we're on, on the outside and, you know, we we're shaking hands with a lot of executives before they walked in. And I was standing out there and I saw a Porsche pull up and it parked in the front. And out of this Porsche, a tall gentleman got out. He, you know, had on a, a nice suit. It was tailored really well. It had on shades. You know, somebody else took his car and went to parking. And as he was walking up, everyone was shaking his hand. Everyone wanted to take a picture with him. You know, everyone wanted to hear what he had to say. And that day, you know, the whole agenda, he went last. But they edified him the entire day. Talked about how great of a leader he was. Talked about how much value he was adding to the company. Talking about, you know, how all the people that he helped within the company, how he was transforming the industry. And I was like, man, this guy sounds like a phenomenal guy. And at the end of that meeting that day, he spoke and he got up and he moved the crowd and people were standing up and they were clapping and, and that guy what really got me is how much money they told me he made they said the guy was making like millions of dollars and that wasn't even including his bonuses so you know I thought about what he was doing and I said you know what that's the job I want I want to be the president and CEO because he was the president and CEO of George Power and that day that's what I started believing for myself See, I didn't see that growing up, but all I had to do was see somebody else in that position, see what they were doing, and I started to believe, despite where I was, I could eventually get there. So what started to happen over the course of time, I started to prepare myself, okay? Now, we're going to talk about it here shortly, but what I want you to understand is this. Over the course of the next year, I would tell everyone I was working with, the guys, listen, I'm going to be the president and CEO of George Powell. You know, I'm going to do what I have to do to get promoted. I'm going to do what I have to do to, to be able to go through all the politics. And, and the vast majority of the people would tell me, Rico is never going to work out. There's too many hoops to jump through. You got to do too many things, have too many jobs. You don't come from the right background. You don't look the right way. Well, the bottom line was this. Most of them were negative and they were telling me that I couldn't do it. I didn't let that stop me. However, I quit my job within the next year. But that didn't stop me from accomplishing what I set out to accomplish because what I believed in myself and what I expected. Because years later, guess what? I still became the president and CEO. Years later, I still bought a Porsche. Years later, I'm in a position where I inspire so many people. When I go places and people want to take pictures with me and people talk about you know, what kind of blessing that I've been in their lives. But you got to understand the only reason why I believe. I was blessed and fortunate to reach the position of president and CEO is because early on, I believed that I could reach it. I believed that I could do it. I believed it. See, you have to understand that belief is the foundation 
to expectancy. The question I have for you is what do you believe for yourself? What have you been exposed to? What have you seen where you can see yourself out of the situation where you are and see yourself where you want to be and where you're going? See, because even though I grew up in the projects, even though I grew up without a father, even though I grew up not having much money, not knowing anything about business, you know, not being in a position, you know, to take care of my family financially, even though I was there, I didn't see myself there. See, you're not, you know, you're, you're, you, <laughs> Who you are is not where you are. Where you are is not who you are. You got to understand that. Where you are right now is not who you are. Where you are right now is not who you are. So you have to understand that you got to put yourself on track to become who you want to be by first believing it. See, many people get caught up in, you know, Rico, just give me the tips. You know, just give, tell me exactly what to do for me to succeed. Tell me exactly what to do to move to the next level. Tell me exactly what to do to earn my first million dollars. Everybody want to know what to do, but I want you to jot this point down. You can't effectively do before you believe you can be. That's the next note. You can't effectively do before you believe you can be. It all starts off with the belief. I'm going to say it one more time. If you jot down notes, which you should be, you can't effectively do before you believe you can be. See, when we were growing up, that's when our imagination really ran wild, wasn't it? You know, like you think about right now, your kids, if you have small children, especially if they're under the age of, you know, six or seven or eight years old, they believe they can do anything. You know, they want to be doctors and lawyers and firefighters. Some of them want to be superheroes. Right. Some of them, you know, my daughter says she's going to probably be the first female president of the United States because, you know, Hillary didn't win. She said, well, that's all right, daddy. I'm going to be the first female president of the United States. She believes that she can do it. Right. And I believe she can, to be, to be frank. Right. Any of you met my daughter, you probably think the same thing. But the deal is this. We always believed that we could be something growing up when we were younger. You know what we wanted to be. You know, people would ask you that. All the time when you were growing up, you know, what do you want to be? What do you want to become? And we would always talk about what do we want to be? But now since you become an adult and when you go out and network or you meet other professionals in your space, you know, the question isn't what do you want to be or what do you want to become? The question is what? What do you do? See, somewhere along the line, you stop becoming and you just start doing See, doing doesn't get you where you want to go, you know, it gets you to accomplish certain goals. All doing does is just take care of your current situation. So you got to stop focusing on just doing and you got to focus on steadily becoming. See, you can't effectively do if you first don't believe you can be. The question is, what do you want to be? The question is, what do you want to become? See, when you can start believing what you want to be, when you can start believing what you want to become, that's going to give you enough energy and enough excitement and enough passion to get on track to effectively do whatever you got to do. See, it's not just what you do. It's not just what you do. You got to understand this why you're doing it. And if you believe with all your heart that you can have something that you've been dreaming for, hoping for, praying for, and you start learning how to do it, then you will be on your way to making it happen. See, understand this. Belief is the foundation to expectancy, and expectancy employs preparation. I want you to jot that note down. This is about to get good right here. I know it's already been good, but this is about to get better, okay? Expectancy employs preparation. See, when you truly expect something, when you know it's coming, you start preparing for it early. Let me help you out with that. I'll give you an example. Like you have a, when a woman conceives and she gets pregnant, what do they call that? The, the woman says what? I'm expecting. Now check this out. Most times, even before the woman can see a result of the pregnancy, she starts doing things to get prepared for what's coming. She may schedule some doctor appointments. They may give her some prenatal vitamins. She may start changing her regimen in terms of what she eats and where she goes, her lifestyle. She may start buying clothes or getting her husband or boyfriend or whatever to paint the room, you know, in the house for the baby. You know, they start telling everybody what's coming 
They're preparing for what they expect. See, most people want things in life. Most people talk about transforming their lives and, you know, what they're about to do, but they don't start the preparation. See, I started preparing early on one day to become a CEO. I started preparing early on. I remember in high school, I had me a little desk. When I got into college, I started filing away everything from my classes to the different ideas I had to the books I was reading. I would have meetings with my top people in my organization. We would have an agenda. I would go over that agenda. We would have conference calls. I would fly to different areas. We would have executive meetings. I, you you got to understand that I started preparing early on, even before I got to a point of being called a president and CEO, you know, uh, in, in, in the public. I knew it privately. I started preparing privately before anybody else knew it. See, if you're on this call right now, if you're on the Facebook Live right now, I want to ask you, what are you expecting? But the question is, are you preparing for it? So you want everybody eventually to get to a point of respecting you on a certain level, you know, or being able to say you're successful on a certain level, but most of you are not really preparing. You're playing. See, expectancy employs preparation. If you want to be successful on a high level, you got to be able to prepare. And guess what? If you are expecting, honestly, you will prepare. So number one, belief is the foundation to expectancy. Number two, faith is designed to raise your expectations. Number two, faith is designed to raise your expectations. Question I have for you right now is, do you have the courage to raise your expectations. I want you to jot that down. And I want you to come back to it a little later. And I want you to honestly to answer that, right? Because you got to be able to have courage to raise your level of expectation. The question again was, do you have the courage to raise your level of expectation? It's going to take courage. See, most people don't do it because they are afraid of disappointment. That's the reason why people, you know, don't do certain things to put themselves in a situation to be able to raise their level of expectation because they are afraid of disappointment. They rather live down here and be settled than to reach up because they don't want to be disappointed. How many of you have have been holding back from accomplishing things that you wanted to accomplish or, you know, starting a business, you know, having an idea uh, to put yourself or your family in a different situation. But you're so afraid of disappointment that you rather not raise your level of expectancy. You will rather not put yourself on track to have a different type of belief. See, you got to understand that you have to be able to reframe what disappointment really means. You got to be able to reframe what losing really means. You got to be able to reframe, you know, what, what, what all of that, all of that means if you truly want to succeed. See, some people are so hard to encourage because they don't want to, you know, they, they, they don't want to break up their routine. See, many of you who are on this call right now, many of you who are on this Facebook Live right now, you have a certain routine that you have grown accustomed to, that you created surrounding low expectations. So you got to be able to start hanging around people who can increase your level of expectations because they have a high expectation of themselves. They have a high expectation of what they're looking to achieve in their life. You can't be afraid of failure and not be willing to go out and try. See, that's what faith is all about. We have so many people, you know, who may worship a certain religion or may go to a certain church or synagogue or, you know, they, they may believe in something bigger and better than them. But I'm telling you right now that that's the reason why you started, should start employing your faith. The reason why I've always believed that whatever that whatever I set my mind to and I wanted to accomplish, I always believed that I could. Let me tell you why, because I believe in God. I believe in this existence that's bigger and better than me, that shaped everything around me, that's shaping things to come, the entire universe. You got to understand if something, something that, that, that huge can exist even beyond me and that something is also inside of me, how can we not succeed in whatever we're looking to succeed at? 
You know, I think even the book, and if you haven't heard of the book, it's a book called The Holy Bible. If you haven't heard them tell you, check it out. There's some good stuff in it. <laughs> but in that book, and I'm not a, you know, I'm not a scholar on that, but it says faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I want you to think about how strong it is. It's the substance of things hoped for. So that means it's something there, something that you're hoping for. Faith is something that you're hoping for, but it's the evidence of things not seen. So it's proven, although you haven't even seen it yet. See, if you can start employing your faith and you can understand that everything that you ever wanted, everything that you ever dreamed of, everything that you ever prayed for, it's already there because your hopes is the substance, but the evidence are the things that are not seen. You haven't seen it yet. But guess what? If you can get pregnant with that expectancy and you can have that faith that is coming, then one day you're going to give birth to it. But you got to be able to use faith to be able to raise your level of expectations. Number three, your associations will determine your accession. Your associations will determine your accession. What does that mean? The, the levels that you go to, how high you rise, your level of promotion, whether we're talking about your job, whether we're talking about your health, whether we're talking about your relationships, whether we're talking about your finances. So you got to be able to challenge yourself to expose yourself to different things. Let me tell you why. Your level of exposure will determine your levels of expansion. I want you to jot that down. Your levels of exposure will determine your levels of expansion. If you want to be able to expand in your life in different areas, you got to be able to be exposed to certain things. What do you see around you? See, because the things that you constantly see around you could either continue to motivate you or could demotivate you. I want you to think about that. See, because if you can't see better, then guess what? You can't do better. I remember not too long ago here in Atlanta, you know, it was an article that came out and I was reading it, uh, you know, uh, in, in the newspaper on my iPad. And it was talking about how they're doing studies and they're starting to stop putting a lot of low income families in neighborhoods just with other low income families. What they're starting to do is put certain low income families in areas where they're families that are upper middle class or even higher than that and start putting them in communities that are more mixed in terms of the income range. See, because what they're finding is when you put younger people who are in school around other younger people in school that don't do well, that are not looking forward to doing this or that in terms of whatever their level of expectation is in their school, then typically most of them don't do well. But when you have somebody who comes into a neighborhood over here, let's say in a situation where I grew up without a father on this side of the road, but across the street I have a friend who has a, a you know, a, uh, another friend who has a mother who's a doctor and a father who's a lawyer, or maybe one of them is an entrepreneur, you know, and they're doing very well. And I start hooking up with this guy. And he starts talking about different things that I never heard of before. That starts setting light bulbs off in my head to put me in a situation to be able to potentially want to do something better with my life. So you got to understand how important it is. See, I believe there are a lot of people right now who are in jail. And they have the mental capacity to be a president and a CEO. There are a lot of people who are in prison or either dead who are selling drugs. And they had the mental capacity to be running a company, to be managing a large organization. But they never were exposed to a situation or an opportunity to put them in a situation to be able to do that. To put them in a situation to capitalize. So you got to ask yourself, are you really maximizing your true potential with the environment that you are in, the people that you hang around, the stuff that you listen to, the stuff that you currently look at? What are you saying about yourself? See, it's our associations that's going to determine how far we rise or how far we fall. See, if you want to be a winner, you got to start putting yourself around other winners. I always give people this, you know, I tell this story because it's so true and I'm glad it happened this way because, you know, I always tell people that it's not about, you know, leaving the people you around because so many people say, Rico, when I get on this, you know, this track of personal growth and self-development, so you're saying I just got to stop hanging around my family. I just got to stop being around my friends. No, not forever. But you know what? You're going to have to leave them some point.
<laughs> Let me tell you. See, if you want to win, you got to start surrounding yourself by winners. Why? Because winners win. See, if you're losing in your life financially, if you're losing in your life in your relationships, if you're losing in your life in your health, if you're losing in any area of your life, you can almost start looking at the people who are closest to you, and I can almost guarantee you they're losing those areas too. Why? Because losers lose. And guess what? Winners win. If you want to start winning, you got to start surrounding yourself by people who are winning. That means you have to detach yourself from the losers so you can learn how to win and start winning. And guess what? One day you can come back and you can teach those losers how to win. For example, LeBron James, one of the greatest players that ever played in, in, in the NBA, right? National Basketball Association. LeBron James was at, he was playing for Cle the Cleveland Cavaliers for a number of years, won the MVP, went to the NBA Finals, going to the playoffs. The problem was he could never pull it off. He could never win a championship. And he made a decision to leave Cleveland. Now, most people don't agree with how he left Cleveland, but he went to Miami. He had that, you know, they did that big shindig, and he's like, he's taking his talents to South Beach, right? He went to South Beach to play with Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade, and they promised that they would bring home some championships, some titles. He left Cleveland where he was losing, hooked up with those guys in Miami, so he'd go win, and what did he do? That's right, he won. He figured out what he needed to do to be able to win championships. And after he won those championships, what did he do a few uh, a couple of years ago? He came back to Cleveland. Then what did he do after he got to Cleveland? They won the championship. So he left a losing team to go figure out how to win. He won. Then he came back to that losing team, that losing franchise, and guess what? He helped them win as well. See, that's what kind of mindset you got to have if you're around people right now who are not winning. You can love them, but you got to understand you can't carry dead weight. It's about what you and your family are going to be able to get in the long run. You got to be able to focus on taking care of that. See, because at the end of the day, most of us don't want to say we don't want to leave people behind. But the bottom line is this. You can't just sit there and suffer with them. Somebody got to be able to make it happen. And you got to surround yourself with people that's going to help you make it happen. Eventually, you can come back and you can give them. But you got to understand this. You are attracted to what you are exposed to. I want you to jot that down. You are attracted to what you are exposed to. Very important to understand that. So you don't want to get in the habit of developing a, a normal around nasty situations. You know, you, you don't want to be able to build a routine around your disability. Well, what do I mean a normal around nasty situations? See, some people get comfortable living paycheck to paycheck. Maybe they've done it all their lives. And then when they look at their parents and they talk to their parents about the issue, the parents start telling them they've done it. And maybe they start looking at their friends and their friends start telling them they've done it. And you start listening to the news and uh, about how the majority of our population is struggling. How many people are unemployed and many people are getting kicked out of their homes and many people, you know, are getting their cars repo. People are committing suicide because of their finances. And you start thinking, well, at least that's not me. At least I'm not getting foreclosed. At least my car is not getting repo. You know, I'm not thinking about committing suicide at this point. And you start to settle where you are instead of reaching further. And the next thing you know, in five or 10 years, that could potentially be you. So you want to be able to surround yourself with people who are going to continue to pull you up and continue to make you strive, which leads me to number four, excuses, comfort, incapacity. Excuses, comfort, incapacity. So you've got to be very careful with your level of frustration when it comes to you not succeeding as quickly as you're looking to succeed. When it comes to, you know, you trying and you feel like you see other people winning and other people being blessed and being able to realize their dreams and you're not realizing yours. So you got to be careful that you don't start saying to yourself that maybe it's not meant for me. Maybe it's not meant for me to be an entrepreneur. Maybe it's not meant for me to be debt free. Maybe it's not meant for me to be able to live in that big house. And then what you start doing is you start making excuses to justify your actions. It's very easy for somebody to start making excuses to justify their actions. And they start blaming everything but themselves for the lack of the results that they're getting. It could have been very easy for me to say, you know what? 
I won't succeed as an entrepreneur. Nobody ever taught me about business. Nobody ever taught me about marketing and sales. Nobody ever taught me about finance. How can I be an entrepreneur? It could have been very easy for me to be able to, you know, leave my son after he was born. Why? Because I didn't grow up with a father. It could have been easy for me to make an excuse and say it's not going to work for me either. So you got to ask yourself, what kind of excuses are you making that's holding you back from the success that you want in your life in any area because of what's happened to you? So you can't make your you can't continue to let your excuses comfort your incapacity because it's not that you've been cursed. It just may take you a little longer to succeed than other people, but never compare yourself to other people. Let me tell you who you got to compare yourself to yourself. Only compare yourself to yourself. And when you do that, you'll put yourself on track to be able to start having some success that you're looking for in your own life. It's very easy to get frustrated. But you can't start saying, maybe I'm not supposed to be happy. Maybe I'm not supposed to be healthy. Maybe I'm not supposed to have a relationship. Maybe I'm not supposed to be debt free or financially successful. That's not true. Because each and every one of us have the ability to live the best life that we can live. But you just got to be able to find out how to get that best life. And surround yourself with people that's going to be able to help you get there. Number five. Don't mistake optimism with opulence. Don't mistake optimism with opulence. So you got to understand that it's okay to be optimistic. But also at times you got to be realistic. See, it's cool having a great attitude. You know, and, and in fact, you want to have a great attitude. But let me tell you this. There's a difference between confidence and competence. I want you to jot that down. I'm going to give you the difference. There's a difference between confidence and competence. So you got to be confident if you want to succeed, but you got to understand, see, confidence is a function of attitude. There are a lot of people who are very confident, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're getting good results. Now, you want to be confident, but what you, in addition to being confident, you also want to be competent. See, competence is a function of ability. So you want to have a great mindset, but you also want to have a good skill set. And we want to be able to put those things together. So you don't want to be optimistic, you know, at the same time, but you're lacking what's necessary to be able to truthfully succeed. You got to be able to expect this better is going to come. You got to be able to expect that you're going to receive what you're praying for, what you're hoping for. But at the end of the day, we got to do the work. So the question is, are you working on your plan in addition to your attitude? That's something you need to jot down. Are you working on your plan in addition to your attitude? There's a lot of people who develop the right attitude. They read the right books. They go to the right seminars. But do you have a plan in place to be able to succeed? All these trainings, these conference calls, the videos that you watch, the different meetings that you go to, it helps to change your mindset. But action changes your bank account. See, most people, you know, that, that especially individuals who have faith and, and they go to church and they believe. See, they do that, but all that is for is to comfort them in their crisis. So you can't get so you, you, you can't get so routine with just being comforted in your crisis. You also got to look for solutions to take action. If there's things that's happening in your life, don't just look to just hear information to put you on track. To succeed because the information alone is not going to do it, but it's also coupled with the actions. See, I want you to jot this down. Accountability will upset routine. Accountability will upset routine. One of the things I charge my leaders with over the course of the next few months, moving into 2017, I challenge them with introducing people and things in their life that's going to hold them more accountable. Introducing people and things in their life is going to hold them more accountable. See, because if you want to change in your life, but you don't have people around you that have been, that have been helping you forge that change, then it's not, it's, not very, it's not very good chance that that's going to be able to happen for you. So you're going to need a mentor. You're going to need a coach. You're going to need people around you that's going to challenge you on your best day and on your worst day. Challenge you to be the best person you could be because at the end of the day, you know, you're not going to be able to do it by yourself. How do I know that? Because you're not there yet. 
If you could do it on your own, you would already be there. You wouldn't be hoping. You wouldn't be praying. You would be doing. So you want to be able to get something. You become part of an opportunity. Become part of a club. Become part of an organization with some individuals who's going to make you stretch yourself. Tell you what you have to do and help you do it and it puts you on the track to be able to make it happen for you. And number six, energy grows expectations exponentially. Energy grows expectations exponentially. Energy grows expectations exponentially. The question I have for you is, are you passionate about what you're doing? Are you passionate about where you're going? What kind of energy do you have associated with it? Right? You know, most people are going to be more excited about your level of enthusiasm than the depth of your knowledge. If you're an entrepreneur right now and you're trying to sell a product or service, you're trying to sell a concept or an idea, you know, you're trying to build something, you got to get passionate and people got to be able to feel it. If you have certain goals going into this new year, how excited are you about it? You wrote it down on a piece of paper. You want to start exercising to lose weight, but you wake up in the morning and you waking up and you just, you know, you disappointed because you set the goals. You demotivated already even before you start. You want to start eating healthier because that's what's going to help you stay around here longer. But every time you get ready to eat, your blood pressure goes up because you're so depressed about what you got to eat. <laughs> you got to be able to reframe your mindset. You got to be able to start putting some positive thoughts in your head with positive people around you and start making positive preparations so you can start getting some positive results. And going into this thing, I don't want you to consider quitting. Don't do it. If you want to succeed, you can't go into whatever your goals are for this year with one foot in and one foot out. Don't even surround yourself with people that's going to instill doubt in you. You got to surround yourself with people that's going to encourage you every single day and that's going to tell you it can happen. See, when you start having people like that in your life, they make you stronger. And the goal is to get stronger. See, over time, you're going to learn certain things that's going to increase your skill set, but that may take a little while for you to be able to learn what's necessary to succeed. But you got to be able to build it up here. See, so many people want the money so quickly, but they don't want... What's up here? See, a lot of people lack capacity. Like I was talking about earlier, excuses comfort your incapacity. But it's important for you to understand that you got to get passionate about where you're going and you got to start seeking the information and you got to start taking some responsibility for your actions so you can start making things happen. It's not just about looking good, but it's about being good. There's so many people right now in our younger generation who are walking around and confident for no reason whatsoever, and they got more value on their feet with the shoes they're wearing than they have in their head. Why? Because we develop into that type of society, but not you. See, if you want to win, it's going to be about increasing your level of knowledge. It's going to be about increasing your wherewithal and where you're going and your level of belief, your level of faith, and your level of expectancy. But you can never focus on quitting. When I got involved as an entrepreneur, I said, listen, I'm going to get this five years. I committed to five. And I said, listen, if it didn't work out in five years, I could always go back to being broke because I was already good at it. <laughs> but because I committed and I said I wasn't going to quit, I can almost guarantee you that's why I was succeeding. So you got to be able to find someone with energy that will challenge you and that will encourage you to expect more. That's what you got to do on the front end. If you don't have the energy, if you don't have the passion, you know, if you don't have the wherewithal to be able to make it happen in a major way, you got to surround yourself with people that's going to put you in a position to win. And that will help you make it happen. See, guys, before I ended up here tonight, I want to be able to share with you a quick story about a young man who was playing baseball. And, uh, you know, his father was the head baseball coach and he wasn't able to make it out to the game in time. You know, and in fact, the assistant coach wasn't able to make it for whatever reason. So they had a pair just to step in. The pair stepped in. And he was coaching the game and uh, they were losing terribly. You know, the father who was the head coach pulled up. Uh, he got there before the game ended, you know, and, and he, he ran up to the dugout where his son was. And he looked in his son's eyes and his son looked kind of disappointed. father didn't know how to gauge it. But he asked his son, are you discouraged? And his son looked up to him. He said, no, dad, I'm not discouraged. 
And the dad said, why? He said, because the game isn't over. He said, and you just showed up. He said, because I know we can make it happen. And we can come back. And the reality is the son came back, they played the game, and they actually won the game. But the whole message behind that story is I want you to understand this. Some people start looking up at the scoreboard, the scoreboard after so many innings have gone on in their life and they continue to see themselves lose. And before the game is over, they give up. They get so discouraged, they get so disgusted, they get so defeated that they give up even before the game is over. So many people are living right now, they're walking around looking like they're living, but they're dead. There's so many people that die at the age of 25 or 35 and just wait till 65 to be buried. Is that you? See, because as long as you got some more life in you, as long as God blesses you to be able to wake up in the morning and be able to do the things you need to do to take care of your current day, you got to understand that there's some other things you can do to take care of your future. There's some other things you can do to get on track to truly live the life you want to live. See, just like that young man, he was confident because he knew his coach was coming. He was confident because he knew he was surrounding himself with somebody that could help bring them back despite them being behind. See, that's why I encourage you having a mentor. That's why I encourage you having a coach. That's why I encourage you surround yourself with people who's going to help pick you up even when you're down. And those people are going to help you raise your level of expectancy right along with the other things that I've given you here tonight to be able to help you have the best year that you ever looked to have. Guys, with that being said, I appreciate each and every one of you joining me on this Sunday night mentorship call and also Facebook Live. I'm going to be doing some more videos like this um, in the near future. If you enjoyed this tonight, share the video. You know, guys, listen, I look forward to seeing many of you have the success that you're looking for in this next year. And uh, God only knows I hope to continue to provide value as well for each and every one of you so we can go out here and live the best life that we've ever dreamed about living. And not so much for ourselves, but also for those that are coming after us so we can leave a legacy. I believe that's what life is all about. Being blessed yourself, but more importantly, so you can be a blessing to other people and those that are to come. Thanks for joining me tonight, and we'll see you next time. God bless you. Happy New Year. And let's start this year off better than we ever started any year off before. Good night, everybody.